Hello, and thank you for attending Moonblink's Value Added Services Overview. I'll be presenting. My name is Joe Tassoni. I'm the Senior Systems Engineer here at Moonblink. And uh, who Moonblink is? Well, we're founded in 2002. We're a value added distributor headquartered in Sunnyvale, California, and we focus on wireless broadband, enterprise networks, switching and routing, and also some of the wireless verticals that are out there, um, and, some, and of course, Wi Fi. And um, the purpose of this webinar is uh, basically just to communicate to our partners what we offer beyond distribution. So looking at the agenda here, we, are, we have about five topics that we want to cover. So basically just talk about what you get every day when you uh, engage our sales staff for inquiries and orders and, and projects that you're working on, um, our sales staff expertise. And then also we have our VAR support services, which you'd require beyond just the sales, pre-sales support. And then uh, our hosted managed services, also our repair services, and our miscellaneous services. So the first one is that um, many people have probably already experienced this already, but uh, Moonblink has a very knowledgeable sales staff. They're knowledgeable both in, in the, uh, on the technology itself the different wireless devices that are out there or networking devices, but as well as they're very knowledgeable in the industry. They uh, are working on projects all the time and are aware of a lot of, of, of the activity that goes on day to day in the industry, so they have a lot of experience there. And of course, wireless equipment requires a certain level of knowledge to sell competently. Um, there's a lot of art and science involved in it, so you need a certain level of skill to be able to, to, uh, to be able to configured systems effectively. And uh, the sales staff are just more than order takers. We do more than just distribution. We, uh, and being a stocking distributor, we help the customer make product recommendations. Uh, we help and uh, offer assistance in uh, system design for the projects that you're working on. And uh, we also help and make sure that you have the appropriate accessories that, and uh, complementary devices that might go with a system. You might be putting in a, a radio system, but you might need um, mounting apparatus or a tower, um, something like that. And uh, also, sales is very good at, at offering a first-level support. So if you uh, have a question or there's something that you're not clear on and you want to call someone, they're highly available and able to um, get a hold of very easily and can help assist there. And if, if there's a question that a sales rep can't answer, and it's, uh, it can be escalated to engineering and to help and address any technical issues there. So um, basically the whole aim here is when we're, when we're dealing with a partner is that we want to accurately predict uh, the performance of the system prior to purchasing it. We want to make sure that it's going to work like it says it's going to work. And I think that if we follow that model, we, think, we believe that this type of attitude and this type of approach helps reduce product returns, it helps our organization work more efficiently and increase our customer service as well as our partner's organization. It allows them to, to operate faster and quicker too. And we also become, in effect, as a, a one-stop shop. And we try to be able to provide leadership there too and so that all the different pieces of the, of the project will come, will come through. So moving to the next slide, we're going to talk about our VAR support services. And um, this is basically uh, parts of uh, support services that would be beyond product pre-sales. So basically, for example, like if there was a, a scenario like what happens if uh, you were new to a product, uh, you, you haven't had a chance to get certified yet or trained, you know, it might be a new radio or, or maybe not a radio, it may be a gateway or, or a router or something like that, a layer three switch that you need, uh, you need to set up some VLANs or some quality of service on it and you haven't been trained as to where all the commands are and everything else. Well, that may be a good scenario where you might need to, uh, you know, temporary assistance with, with uh, VAR support services. Or you may have some technical staff that are tied up on other projects and they're just not available right now because you've had a lot of business, business is good, and you uh, don't have anybody to free up. Or you may have a customer that might be across the, the country. You may be in California, they may be in New York, and... Um, you need to drop ship a pre-configured device, but you want to save some time and, and ship it from the, the uh, distributor. Well, we can pre-configure the device to match the network settings, the network design and configuration of the customer, and we can have it drop shipped, and then they can just plug it into their network, and it would work. 
or you might have a scenario where there's a project that's outside of your area of expertise. Your core business might be um, Wi-Fi, and this might be a broadband opportunity, or vice versa, or you might be a two-way radio dealer, and there might be a, a broadband opportunity, a point-to-point -point opportunity, and you just need some temporary assistance on getting, learning and understanding the system and how it works. So those are the kind of things that, that might, you know, might require our, our support. Um, some of the uh, items that we can help with, we can help with, of course, a site survey because every type of wireless installation needs some kind of site survey. So we can help um, either remotely by being able to look at the earth and getting, getting some, some GIS data of some kind that, to be able to, to look at the environment and see if it's okay. But we can also go, if, uh, if necessary, on site to do a site survey and assist anybody that would be on site to do that part of the uh, qualification process of, of, of a project. Also, we do path profile and heat mapping services. So this could include looking at tower types and heights. Uh, this would be for outdoor broadband type of infrastructures. Looking at antenna sizes and styles to be able to shape the RF patterns effectively and utilize them and make them as efficient as possible. We can perform site layout reports, uh, system transmission design, and we can also do uh, local spectrum analysis to determine the best usable frequencies so that you can decide which frequencies are going to have the least amount of interference. And we'll give you a good idea um, at looking at all the stuff, that, the type of predicted coverage that you might encounter. Uh, also, we, uh, we, do, we have support packages available where we can have pre or post engineering time can be purchased per hour a day or in 40 hour blocks. And this can be done on site, or for less critical applications we can do, we can have remote or off-site technical support that would be typically done over the phone or by email and things like that. But typically it would be, it would be live support and also complemented with email. We can also do lab testing and uh, scenario replication for troubleshooting if there's problems. Um, of course, we do the network pre-configuration and uh, we can pre-configure uh, pre equipment uh, before it ships. This could be including configuration of radios so that they're deployment ready and any spares that you might have, uh, doing the channel planning, make sure that the uh, all the devices are configured with the right channel so that it automatically will work, C custom configurations that you might have based on um, what features are available that, uh, to, the, to the radio that we could turn on for, for uh, a design. We can do configuration backups so that in case you ever lose your configuration, we can just send you new ones uh, based on the default parameters that they were uh, that were originally assigned to the device. We can do firmware updates to make sure that the devices are uh, running on the latest code and that any bug fixes that have been fixed have been addressed or are included. And any new features that might be uh, available with the firmware. Sometimes new firmware comes with new features. And uh, we can also do testing and burn-in make sure that the devices work and that they're going to uh, function properly. So um, of all these uh, items identified, we can also provide training on top of this uh, for any of these items. So if you just wanted to have assistance, we can do it. But we can also train your staff on how to do this kind of thing as well. And the, the most important thing I, w I also want to mention here is that any type of support services that we do and anything that we do to an e for an end user, uh, we always like to uh, want to perform through Avar or through the uh, the end users customer through our partners. We like we try to act like an employee of our reseller partners, and uh, we just want to make sure that we obviously deploy our services through a channel. So we don't deal with the end users directly unless it's through one of our Avar partners. So I'm just going to move on to some examples of some of the software that we would use that you would see typically. Um, that there's all various types of software that we use, all kinds. And uh, we would, may deploy different combinations of that depending on the situation. So here's just a, a, an example of a cross-section view of a path profile. So you know, using software of this type, we can um, harness SRTM data, the data that the sh shuttle research mission did uh, in 2000 to be able to get. Uh, so we have some pretty current um, data on, on, the, on the terrain. Uh, using this and utilizing this data, we can factor in um, any obstructions that might be along the path if they're man-made. 
could be a building, something like that. We could then learn how to um, handle that and work work with it or work around it. And it can also factor in things like foliage, the natural grown obstacles that might happen, trees, because of course the data, and then we're able to figure out how how uh, how best to approach it. Another example here, going to the next slide. Here's a, a, a 3D view. This is uh, another good perspective to look at a, a system. Using 3D view for terrain, it allows you to um, choose the ideal tower and antenna placement based on the lay of the land. And also with this, you can predict multipath behavior. So if you're implementing a system that utilizes multipath, you can use, uh, be able to effectively utilize it. Or if it's one that avoids multipath, you can figure out where it is and, and, and take steps to avoid uh, the multipath phenomenon from happening. And also, you can take a look at, for example, this 3D has a bit of a valley, so you can utilize either the hills or the valleys. You can use the hills to place towers to get more height if necessary, or you can utilize valleys to um, contain RF signals and make sure that they don't propagate beyond where you want them to go. Moving on to the next slide, an example here of an aerial viewpoint. So this may be a, a post-installation analysis. Uh, we can take a look at the system reserve phase margin here, be able to calculate if there's enough of a buffer if, in case that the climate changes, if there's rain or something like that, or it snows, or there's a lot of fog that you've got enough of a buffer, depending on the type of system that you're designing or that has been designed. And you can take a look at the, dis the distance, the free space loss, make predictions there as to how much is, is happening over the free space, how much loss is occurring. You can find out throughput and availability. And in this, in this example, there's an obstruction in the way, so you can deal how, um, you know, figure out how to deal with a certain obstruction. So you could decide to either um, place the antenna in a different location or remove the, the obstruction or do a a multiple hop around the device and do a dog leg hop around the obstacle. Okay, so I'm um, going to move on to the next slide. Just real quickly here. Okay, here's an example of uh, another side view, like the plane of, of, of an antenna view. So we can take a look here of what the Fresnel zone encroachment would be like how much uh, is occurring, whether it's hitting the ground or, or some kind of hill. Uh, we can adjust the antenna heights or we can increase their sizes, the, the, the dish or the gain on them. And we can also, after putting together some examples of how the system would work, we can put together an accurate bill of materials so that you would have all the pieces of the system and know it, that you would be able to design and create a complete link or multiple links, depending on what you're doing. So after, while utilizing the, utilizing the software, we can also um, use a common software platform. We can use Google Earth. Everybody's familiar with that. You can download it for free and install it. So we can use this to collaborate um, the design. And uh, we can save uh, links in uh, KML, KMZ output, so that they can be emailed, so that any ads or changes or any moves that you make, they can then be updated, and then everyone can review them and make sure that, that uh, everyone's on the same page. Uh, you can also use this tool to locate tower assets and maybe any potential high points that you could utilize to, as well. And then you can go into the software and punch in the numbers and see how, how, how they could theoretically perform. 